Hey songwriters, welcome back to the studio. My name is Dean and today we're gonna talk about 10 mistakes that we GarageBand users commonly make. Now this isn't gonna be a point the finger in your face kind of video because I have made all of these mistakes, so let's dive in. So we'll go by category and we'll start with the creative songwriting side. And the first mistake that I see is we don't take advantage of all the incredible software instruments that GarageBand offers. Do you know that there's an entire library's worth of really cool, realistic sounding software instruments for you to use to build out and add to your projects? And even cooler, did you know that you can actually play and record all of these software instruments using your typing keyboard? You simply hit command and K on your typing keyboard and it brings up what's called the musical typing feature which allows you to play and record all of the software instruments. Mistake number two on the creative side is we don't take advantage of the automatic drummer. If you've never used the automatic drummer before you have got to try this thing out. You can choose from a variety of different drummers all with their own sound and you can change up their performance any way you want. This is a massive tool for those of us who don't play the drums so you have to check out the automatic drummer. Next, let's move into the recording side of things. And I wanna share two mistakes that I see. Number one is we don't use the metronome to record up against. So our songs end up sounding a bit out of time and just a little unprofessional. So I would highly encourage you before you even start your song to figure out how fast your song is. You can even punch it in on the tap tempo feature on the opening window and then record with the metronome on. It'll not only keep you tight and in time when you record, but it'll also open up the door for you to use some really powerful editing tools like the quantize feature. The second big mistake that I see in recording, and this especially pertains to vocals, is we record our voice way too quiet. Or on the flip side, we record our voice way too loud. So the downside of recording your voice too quiet is when you start to boost it or add processing like reverb, well guess what? All of that little ambient noise in the background, it gets that processing and reverb too. Then on the flip side, if you record it too hot, you actually start to clip, which means that your audio, your vocal is distorting and it just starts to sound real grindy and weird. So simply aim to record your vocals and your guitars too at about 50 to 65% up the meter. The next two mistakes that I see happen in the mixing phase. And the first one is we tend to overdo our processing. We overdo our effects like reverb and delay and things like that, especially when it comes to vocals. We'll do a ton of delay with a really long tail, a ton of echo, just because we like the way it sounds and there's nothing wrong with that. I just might advise you to back it down a little bit to where you can hear that it's working and it sounds cool, but it's not just totally overtaking your vocal. And then one more tip on the music making side to kind of bring the whole creative and recording and mixing together is that we tend to not finish songs. And hey, I'm totally guilty of that at times, but sometimes we get in this mode where we just create little ideas, little ditties, but we don't actually complete things. And there's two bummers about not completing songs. Number one, we can't really share them with anybody. But number two, you don't gain the skills that only come through finishing a song all the way through. All right, so now for the last category of mistakes that I see in GarageBand, and honestly, I feel like these are the most important because these aren't necessarily musical mistakes, but they're mindsets that really limit us as GarageBand users. And the first mindset that's a mistake, in my opinion, is we don't take GarageBand seriously. We don't see it as a legitimate recording program. And so we kind of give it a half effort, we make excuses, but what I want you to realize is GarageBand is a fully functioning, very powerful digital audio workstation. It's one that I've been using to not only record my original stuff, but also to record for paying clients. So not taking GarageBand seriously leads into mindset number two, and that is I see people who are like always searching for more sounds, new sounds, new patches, loops, plugins, whatever it is. Now I'm not against third party sounds, I'm just saying you have a wealth of loops, a wealth of instruments, tons of plugins that you can use right there in GarageBand, which leads to the final mistake that I see happen too often. People move out of GarageBand into Logic or some other program way too fast, in my opinion. Because they didn't master GarageBand and hone in their skills, now they step into Logic and there's actually more buttons, more features, and they end up making less music, they're more confused. And I'm not saying this happens to everybody or this 
this is gonna happen to you. I'm just saying, if you're not already making solid music in GarageBand, you have no reason to step into a $200 program that's more complicated. So there are 10 mistakes that I see GarageBand users very commonly making, and I hope it's actually encouraging to you. I hope you can learn something from this. So comment below which piece was most helpful and relevant to you, and I will catch you in another video.